Okay, this particular recording actually comes from the end of a particular class in 2019 where the students were responsible for reading several chapters in the White et al. textbook, and then the final reading for that week was chapter 10 in the Bronson et al. textbook. So the material that you're going to see here focuses on chapter 10, but it comes at the end of a longer class, so it's a much briefer lecture. So I will turn it over to Dr. Clavel Hall here now, and I will pick it up again at the end. So we're actually going to start talking a little bit about systems thinking. And so I thought this was an interesting quote. You've probably read this. Um, but uh, Peter Singe is saying this as we look, we tend to blame uh, other people or other things for things that are going on. But the salient part of this quote to me is the fact that he says, uh, systems thinking shows us that there is no outside and that you and the cause of your problem are part of a single system. And, and the cure lies in your relationship with your enemy. So uh, if we move on from that, from that comment, we're looking at systems thinking and understanding complex problems. And a few of you mentioned this, that uh, healthcare is, a complex field in itself, and in that you have uh, rapid and continuous change. And the problem is the changes are nonlinear. And when we think about systems thinking, it gets complicated because there's no one set of protocols of a way to treat a particular problem or a particular healthcare problem or organizational problem. And that makes systems thinking complicated in itself, even though the organization or person or level of organization you're using it with is also complicated. So it's, it's a multiple complicated situations that you may be faced with. And as we're talking about here, uh, as I said, you look at multi-level problems. Somebody talked about, uh, are you, going to be addressing, are you going to be addressing the individual? Uh, that's one level that you look at. Think about the diabetic person. Uh, for instance, this is the 30 to 40 year old group of diabetic people here. As you said, you have to look at where they fit in this entire system, the socio-ecological system, what's going on with their social environment, What's going on with their living environment? What type of healthcare insurance do they have? All of those things will impact how you as a nurse practitioner would address uh, that particular group, even though they have a common problem. So we look at this knowing that we'll have to treat people differently according to what their levels of uh, their situation is, what kind of organizational system they're working through, their community, what kind of resources are available, and what kind of government uh, help they may or may not need. So all of that has to be considered. So then we look at the uh, situation here where we talk about the systems approach. What is the system? a connected set of elements, and uh, they're organized in a certain way so that they can achieve a particular goal. Uh, some uh, place I read, they gave an example. Think about just your digestive system. I think we mentioned this the other day. Think of all of the parts of your digestive system. You might think of things like your, your throat, your tongue, your, ab your stomach, uh, your... I don't know, what is it, your intestine, the digestive system, those parts are put together and they have components, all systems, whether it be organizational, individual, or body system, they have elements, parts to it, but there's an interconnectedness that you're looking at and you're looking at 
the purpose or the overall function for it. So that's what you're looking at when you're looking at systems approaches, okay? And we're looking at using them in uh, dissemination and implementation with the understanding that there is no set uh, of taxonomy or definitions that are set in stone for most of the definitions of what you're using the systems approach for. So it makes it a bit more complicated and you have to go deeper to understand it because there's not a set of, set of uh, definitions, protocols, or rules for those that you use. When we look at uh, social network analysis, those were two approaches. And you mentioned public health. Do you remember seeing uh, a diagram similar to the one on your screen in your reading? I'm thinking of your Bronson book. Okay, very good. I'm go going to ask you to uh, take your Bronson book and follow Tiffany to page 161. And what she's saying is one of the uh, case studies that they brought forth. And we'll just point this out. Uh, I'm gonna ask, do you, are you with me? I'm looking at figure 10.3, page 161. You see that diagram in this, uh, in, in this case study and in systems thinking, as the slide before talked about nodes and connections right. uh, is what system thinking is about. So I want you to share what your understanding is of the diagram on 10.3 with regards to systems thinking. So uh, do you see that they said in the reading that there are two hospitals involved here? Can you tell which are the two hospitals? You see them? Diagram 10.3. Okay. So you've seen the hospital, and they say that um, they thought they were centrally positioned so that they could be referral hospitals. And uh, so the next thing you see, look at the uh, look at the community health centers. Do you see which circles those are? Okay, and do you see the community service organizations? So my question is, how easy is it for the far, the most far out, the furthest located community service organization, people who are going to their services, how easy is it for them to get to the main hospital? I think that was something that they did not see until they did this mapping. Uh, they said community service providers as well as the community health uh, centers were on the periphery and not well connected. So I'm gonna cut the recording there and essentially what happens for roughly the next 20, 25 minutes was the uh, Dr. Clavel Hall and the students continue to talk about some of the cases that we found in chapter 10, focusing specifically upon the figures and how those figures were looking at different aspects of social network analysis, in particular figures 10.2 and 10.3 on pages 160 and 161, as well to a lesser extent, figure 10.4 on page 164. So in conclusion or in summary, uh, first I'll mention that these are the summary points for the overall lecture that Dr. Clavel Hall gave that evening. And as a part of the um, readings that the students had for that week, they would have read uh, chapters 9 and 10 in the White et al. textbook, as well as chapter 10 in the Bronson textbook, which is why you see some of these points don't quite align to the things that we've been looking at this particular week. But I wanted to leave them in here because I believe it's a good way of trying to connect what's happening in the two texts in a way that we've been trying to do now as we've been looking at this systematic thinking. So 
If you think back to last week and the idea of project management and instructional design, you should be able to see some of the systems thinking that was involved in that kind of enterprise, and that should give you some overlap to the type of systems thinking and systems design, as well as the network analysis that you see being talked about in Chapter 10 here in Bronson. As a nurse practitioner, not only is it useful to have an understanding of the role and characteristics of learning, but having a specific process and understanding that process and being able to talk through that process, that instructional design model that we were looking at last week, those types of things will better prepare you to be able to work with the stakeholders that you need to engage as you try to implement some of these evidence-based practices that you would like to do within your organization. Because you'll have a language and a terminology that you'll be able to use that should help inform those that you need to buy into your your initiative the 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 specific thing that you're trying to accomplish within your organization and finally it's important to remember that as you approach any of these evidence based practice projects um, or these translational research projects that there are different levels within the system that you need to understand, that you need to work with, that you need to make sure have been accounted for and brought into the process because any individual or any agent within one of these levels has the ability to foul up essentially what it is you're trying to do. So if you are looking at doing something say specifically up on a unit or on a floor within a hospital, it's important to understand that the overall structure of the hospital still plays a role in whether or not that's going to be successful. So we need to make sure that we have a good understanding of and we are aware of the relationships that exist between the various agents at the micro, meso, and macro levels as we're moving forward. So that's a quick look at chapter 10 and as we move forward this week some of the chapters that we look at we'll be looking at in a more individual fashion like we did with this one. Others we'll be looking at in a more systematic fashion uh, trying to tie in the, the three or four chapters together as we move forward.